Hi, welcome back to A Boat Called Wonder. Well, finally I'm in my workshop and I'm in a position now where I can start to move forwards with Wonder again. Um, so I've finished off all of that um, bulkhead replacement which really sort of set me back a little bit and uh, took me down a detour that I didn't want to go on. But anyway, that's all done now so I can start to work on the next part which is to go and get that um, that uh, 24 mil plywood that I made up for the lazarette floor and I can bring that back here, it's in the container at the moment and um, cut out the, the hatch hole in that. I've also got about 10 litres of vinyl extra resin and um, a bunch of 300 GSM chop strand matting and all of the other um, you know, triaxial uh, material that I had left over from the previous repairs to Wanda. So I've got everything I need now to go ahead and build a, a hatch, a lid for that, um, that hole in the lazarette floor that I'm going to create. So yeah, I'm going to start getting to work on that and really looking forward to doing some um, building for something different rather than just repairing. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the lid or the um, hatch cover that I laminated up a couple of days ago. First thing to point out are these, these marks here which came after I'd put the heat mat on. So I'd post cured it, nothing excessive, it was 55 degrees and then I cranked it up to 85 degrees. When I took the mat off here I, I found these two scorch marks. Um, this is vinyl ester so it can be post cured up to you know 120 degrees so 85 degrees wasn't excessive. I really don't know why I got these marks here unless these marks are caused by the foam in the middle. But anyway, it's not, not a problem. I'm going to um, paint this up in a minute. Then I drilled the holes around here. They're 11 millimeters. Um, sorry, they're nine millimeters for the M8 bolt. And the only other thing that's a little bit disappointing is I laid this up using chop strand mat and then I put this foam core in and then I put more chop strand mat and the last piece of cloth I put down I think it's called S cloth and they use it for making surfboards and it's a really fine material which I thought would just you know drape over beautifully and give it a nice smooth finish compared to the corrugated effect you get with chop strand and matting um, but as I was wetting it out, I realized that it wasn't really going around corners easily. It was quite rigid and it wanted to spring back. So as a result, I got quite a few pockets or bubbles around here, particularly in the corners, which I've just sanded out. Um, it's not a problem because that was really just for co cosmetic purposes. And it's just that outer layer that didn't um, really follow the contours. So. Yeah, if I had a bit of, um, there's one there, I need to get that out. I had a bit of fairing compound, I'll just quickly do that, but I don't have any fairing compound here. And I want to keep going, so.
Yeah, that's what it looks like when I find um, a pocket or a, a bubble. I just sand it out. And it leaves a little bit of a indentation, which isn't pretty, but that's okay. I can live with it. There's another one there. Yeah, interesting. These marks have come off a little bit, so they definitely were not in the foam, but right on the surface. What I need to do is we're looking at the back side of that um, floor that I've made for that uh, compartment and I've drilled through, uh, oversized drilled through and filled it up with thickened epoxy um, and then drilled again and uh, these, these M8 stainless steel bolts are going to be embedded here and they're going to go through to the other side so that the lid can uh, come onto these and then I can tighten it up with nuts. So um, I just want to do, drill a recess now here for all of these to plant these down and then I can get some um, epoxy with chopped strands and just really uh, bed them in here the way I did uh, the same technique I used for the fuel tank. So this is a 20 mil um, force in a bit and then I think this comes to about 16 millimeters. This is a, a bolt with a flange attached to it so um, yeah, I think that should work out quite well. So, that should be about right, I think. And then it should come through about 25mm on this side, which will be fine. Right, so I just set up the production line for this. One's probably too much. Probably need, oops, need not quite so much, I think. Just in case it's not right, then I need to knock it out. Because this stuff is super strong. Right, let's have a look at this. <sighs> See if it comes off. <clears throat> a bit tight. But now I can tack in my four corner pieces and really fill these up and have them bedded down really nicely. Lots of chopped strands.
cool. It's a good consistency. Right, so this is the back part of the um, lazarette floor and I've got some cutouts here and here. So this one is going to be where the um, exhaust comes out from the engine. It's, um, yeah, so it comes up through this channel and then goes out there. And uh, this will have the water pipes for the scupper and uh, bilge pump output and things like that. So I'm just... just going to use up some of this um, laminate I made a while ago for the fuel tank. It's just a piece of leftover which will be absolutely fine for what I need. This is quite runny. Right, now to make some nice seals. Got this um, quite thick neoprene rubber. if I can cheat and use this one as well. Okay, that um, butt joint that I made here and here actually looks really good. It's nice and tight. So, moment of truth. Look. Looks good. Yeah, that looks, that's really good. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. It's not pretty on the backside, that's for sure. I just put some, um, like a meniscus of epoxy on these holes to give it like a round, curved 
shape so that if I'm down here I don't bang my head on any sharp corners. I'll just obviously go over that with a sander. Uh, yeah. Really happy. To finish it off, I will have these rubber washers just so that I can clamp this down and not um, shatter the the laminate nice neoprene here and rubber on this side so yeah should be fine Actually, these rubber washers are going to be too soft. I think they're too soft, they're just going to squish like a rubber band. I might have to get a different material. Obviously, I don't want steel metal, but maybe I can get a fibre one. But anyway, that's fine. I can, I can sort that out later on. The butt joint there is really snug, so there's not going to be a massive amount of water in the Lazarat. You know, bringing in fenders and things will be a bit, but um, I'm pretty sure that this is a really good seal, so it won't go down into the engine room. Um, obviously, I need to make a drain here to go into the build. Okay, well, my weekend's up now, so I've got to call it a, uh, a day and put the tools down, but um, I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made over the weekend. I've got that Lazarat floor. Um, at a point where I can put it into the boat now, I've got the hole cut out, I've got all the bolts mounted properly, um, the, uh, the lid is made and the lid will fit in over the bolts and everything aligns quite nicely. I've got those gaskets made um, and I've got those little uh, covers for where the water pipes come through the floor. So yeah, I've, I've sort of done, a, feels like I've done a lot of work over the weekend. So um, the next chance I get, which will be in two weeks time from now, I can go down and um, fit everything into Wonder and tab it out and uh, looking forward to seeing how that looks and hopefully everything's aligned. I didn't make things too tight, I left quite a bit of clearance. So I'm really looking forward to that and um, I'll see you then in a couple of weeks to see how that goes. Thanks for watching, bye for now.